Hello, everybody. This is Eric. Uh, today, we're going to talk about sober for the holidays. Um, I will confess, as a therapist of 30 plus years, the busiest time is the holidays. And I have a few ideas of why that may be. Um, people don't see family because of divorce or um, someone passing away, which is really hard. People don't get to see their kids. Or people are seeing their family, which triggers them into these feelings. And I don't necessarily like the word trigger, but that's how people describe it, that they're propelled into these feelings. Maybe it's high expectations that we see these things on Hallmark, <laughs> beautiful family gatherings and everything works out well. And we want it to all work out well, and then it doesn't work out well, and then we feel really sad and depressed. Perhaps it's changing in eating. We're eating much more stuff. Um, changes in spending um, that we start to feel the financial stress. Those who are in 12-step um, recovery for money issues like that is anonymous feel it. There's people drinking more just around us that could trigger those in AA a bit. If you have a strong program, it, it wouldn't. But going to family gatherings where everybody else is drinking and you're trying to do this sober. That's why um, I was going to say something like how to do holidays while being sober. Sober means to feel feelings, to see reality, to be in touch with what's going on with yourself. I think sleep schedules are totally disrupted. People stay up a little bit later or they're traveling. That's another big I don't like the word trigger, but a disruption in your daily routine. <coughs> so what helps? Um, well, um, this is not going to come as a surprise. Do the steps. Do the steps and take the steps with you wherever you go. Do the steps on Christmas morning, on Thanksgiving morning. Um, I believe in meetings on, on these holidays. I, I think it's, it's fun. I find it very fun to be able to slip away, find a, and with Zoom, it's incredible. Um, before I'd have to kind of escape. Hey, I'm gonna go to the store, I wouldn't lie. But um, <laughs> get me out of here. I love y'all, but get me out of here. And, um, and run to a meeting and grab some sanity and then come back. Now I think in terms of doing the steps without having to be in a meeting, but meetings so help. With Zoom, it's just a couple of buttons away. Yeah, you, you can do a six in the morning or a seven in the morning. And um, there's something really nice about connecting with what's going on. So Zoom meetings, um, so meetings, but being mindful of what you're eating. Realize that playing around with blood sugar levels can really make us not really happy in the end. And I mean, yeah, I would feel like a hangover after eating too much sugar. Um, and then grumpiness, resentment, all kinds of things. So take care of yourself physically. <coughs> the question, is this worth it? You know, whether it's a resentment, a fault finding. Um, if it's really, really important, then, then yeah, it's worth it. Uh, but like some of the food choices, yeah, it's not worth it. For me, that's, that's where I'm at. Um, I think being in touch with your feelings is important. I mean, being in touch with God is really important. And that's kind of a given. But being in touch with what am I feeling? Am I scared? Am I nervous? Is that why I'm eating, you know, um, <laughs> the vegetable tray? <laughs> and then I'll be honest, getting bloated from eating too much of these vegetables out of nervousness. Realized I wouldn't do this at home. So there's other choices I have to feel my feelings. And, um, 
feeling feelings and in asking ourselves what do i need and for me a lot of times i needed space just to process breath of fresh air a little walk very cool like a recovery walk praying and meditation getting up in the morning and at night making sure i have that 10th and 11th step inventory and i'll confess sometimes they're shorter but it's like i do it it's almost as if and i love my family members i'm not trying to put them down i think i probably get on their nerves too but um to be the best eric i can be is if i take that 20 minutes do some spiritual literature reading um, do some 12-step recovery literature it's like it's giving me what I need so that when I go out and say hi to everybody, I'm in a good place. And I would say that things which used to be kind of not so good have gotten so much, much better. And guess what? None of those other people changed. It was me changing my attitude, changing how I saw things, trying to live with step four, understanding that everybody around me is spiritually sick. <clears throat> and I realized that some people around me are spiritually sick and wanting to get better. Those people I would call recovery partners or a family of recovery. Then there's other people that just don't aren't there yet. And they're still doing whatever they're doing that could be inebriating or numbing themselves. And I don't say that with any, I mean, I'm trying to be honest, but with any, I'm better than them. No, it's, I may be better off. But no, I have to be kind and compassionate and understanding that everybody's doing the best they know to do. And perhaps they do what they do to cope by seeing me. You know, maybe that that's um, what they do. And I'm glad that um, um, I do have family that uh, we can get along with. And um, so staying grounded in you know, the principles, um, being mindful of self-care. I think overall, some of the slogans that come up are really pretty cool. One is take it easy. Like whatever I do, just do a gentle approach. Do 40% of what I would want to do. Um, the flip side of that is being honest. I realized a lot of times I'm not honest. I just keep things to myself and that's what build up something. And just to be honest, I remember a, my, a family member said, well, just tell us what you need. And it's like, well, I need to be at a hotel. And that just gave me the space to not be kind of in a family dynamic um, where I didn't feel like I had choices. And it's like, it was not a big deal to them. They were not heartbroken. This was my mother said, well, just take care of yourself. It's like, well, that's cool. I think it's good to expect the best in situations and in people. Um, so being honest, keeping things simple. When I have complicated um, family gatherings and plans and family, if they ever watch this, we go, yep, that's Eric. How many ways can we decide how to get to the mall and what's the best pattern to do it? And it's like we're exhausted by all thinking, overthinking. Versus let's just keep it simple. Um, keeping recovery simple. If it's simple, you'll do it. So if recovery for me was a long-winded writing things out and have to write out that four step quick, hold on, family, I'm busy. No, I can do it kind of in my head now. I'm not saying that there's not value to journaling. I like that. And so I bring a little journal, but keeping things simple. So hopefully these things will help you have a really good holiday season. I love y'all. You take care and we'll see you later. <coughs>